Hey, what's up? This is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. I'm going to do another tutorial for you today, which is a ball um, with balls in it. And the idea is that uh, we're going to cover the, uh, the bit of dynamics and doing the old sl ramped slow mo thing. Um, yeah, I thought I'd add a video of like a, like this on the start of this because all the good tutorials have uh, this sort of thing on them. So uh, let's hop into cinema and see how we go. What we are going to do is create uh, our bowl. Um, you saw the uh, demo. It looked something along these lines there. Now this, I've obviously I've gone into a bit of effort and textured everything and uh, spent a bit of time over that. We're not going to spend too much time. We're just going to sort of go over the more of the, the how to achieve the movement. Uh, something uh, to bear in mind is that uh, you you want to have had you want to have been playing with cinema a little bit. So uh, I'm not going to cover absolutely every single little bit of detail, um, but uh, let's have a go and. Let's see what we can see what we can come up with. We're going to create the bowl first. Uh, to do this, very very easy. We go up here into our splines and we select the arc, and that gives us an arc. Funnily enough, um, start angle zero, yes. Uh, end angle ninety. Bomb. How easy was that? We've now got an arc facing a slightly different way. <laughs> But no, what we do with this is we set uh, a uh, we we put it into a lathe nerves. See what that does is it kind of it takes the spline and then fills it round it kind of thing. Uh, here I'll just show you. Uh, if you hold Alt when you select this, it uh, it will automatically apply it to the highlighted uh, spline. So we just do that. Boom! Look at that. There's your bowl. How easy was that? Have a look. Boom! There it is. Right. Just for your reference, that was Control and R to do a quick render preview. Uh, d -d 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 -d. So, uh, oops, sorry, pressed the wrong button. There. Something that you're going to want to do, depending on sort of if you're far away, see that looks kind of fine. But if you get close up, you'll see you you can see these jaggedy edges. If you want to fix those, it's down here with your subdivision uh, on the lathe nerves. You just ramp that up. Obviously, the higher you go, the smoother you will get. However, it is at the cost of render time. So just for now, we're not going to get too close. We're going to go with 40. And that'll do. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Something I didn't do in the original video uh, was to give this some thickness. Um, at the moment, it's, it's, it's as thin as it can be. So uh, I did just do this to give it a little bit of thickness. Basically, make a copy of your lathe nerves by dragging down and holding control that then gives you a copy um, press C to make it editable or you can press this button up here but I like to use the keyboard shortcuts as it's quicker um, we've now got two versions of this but on this one with it highlighted we go to select and no we don't sorry about that we actually go down to here this is our tools uh, this is our polygon selection tool here uh, and we do select and we do select all that's now collected uh, selected all of those um, now we want to get the extrude tool which you can either do from up here in mesh and create and then extrude or you can press D on the keyboard and that gives you your extrude tool uh, and we're just going to click and drag in just a touch there we go just to give it so it's got a little bit of thickness to the bowl and then if you press space it takes you back to your uh, selection tool I'm just going to move it down a tiny bit. That just gives you a little bit of an edge. And there you go. We've now got a bowl. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Um, just for tidiness, uh, we will group these together. So you highlight both of them and press Alt and G. That groups them together into a null object. We're just going to call that null object. There we go. Let's see. Next. We are going to make a floor. Um, so we just use a floor object here. Boom, there we go. Now I know what you're thinking. The bowl's vanished. It's all right. It's actually underneath the floor. So we'll just click this button here, which allows you to see all the views. Select our bowl and 
with making sure that we're not selected to polygons, we're actually selected to objects here. We then just, just lift that up. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to use dynamics to fix it. So as long as it's just up slightly above it, then that's all good. The next thing we are going to do is, uh, yeah, let's add some dynamics to it and make it a real scene. Um, so the first thing is the floor. You right click on it, select simulation, and then collider body. That basically makes it a solid, a solid object that things will hit and react to, which is about right for a floor. Uh, the bowl itself, a uh, little bit more to it. We're going to select simulation and then rigid body. Now, if you just do it like that, what you will get is it falling through the floor. And this is because of the fact that you've, you're basically you've got some children underneath this parent. So what you need to do is go into the dynamics uh, collision inherit tag and set that to apply tag to children. Okay, but what will happen here is that it now kind of does that. Now, uh, in case you didn't see what actually happened there, it was the two bowls separated by launching the inner bowl into the sky. That's definitely not what we want. So it might actually be that we need to do um, a collision compound, a compound collision shape. That might actually be the one we want. Right, there we go, that's now sitting. Uh, and just to test it, we'll just make a cube, just place it above it, selection, rigid body, and just test that. Ah, now what's happening here? It appears that the uh, cube is sitting on top of the space in the bowl. The reason for that is because the uh, the uh, bowl is set to shape automatic, and that will just basically make that a solid, whether it's hollow or whatever, it will just always be a solid. So we just do the drop down and we select moving mesh. And in theory, when you press play, your cube should sit inside your bowl, and there you go. There's a quick introduction into dynamics. <laughs> um, we'll get rid of the cube, we don't need that anymore. Let me think now. Now we're going to use uh, spheres. Now here's some really handy things to know about when working with lots of balls. There's our ball. If we render that by pressing Control and R, no, I've pressed the wrong button. There we go. There you go. Uh, you will see it's nice and round. Now that if that is because you have here render perfect. This tick box is brilliant when you're working with with lots of balls um, because what you can actually do is put the segments right down to a sort of about five now while that looks pretty naff when you actually render it so you get your nice round sphere now this is obviously brilliant for render time well it doesn't really matter for render time but it does matter for when it's working out the dynamics so um, if like myself you're not on a particularly quick computer <laughs> um, that's very handy so I'm just going to shrink that down a bit, like so, and you'll still see it's a nice little ball there. This sphere I'm going to place into a cloner object. Now, what that will do is clone it, funnily enough. Uh, go to MoGraph and then clone it. Again, if you hold Alt, when you click on it, it will automatically put it in, and you haven't got to drag it in, which is nice. Um, and as you can see, that's now that's made, now made a cloner. Uh, it's currently set to linear uh, with a count of four, so that gives us four and it's it's all up in a straight line. So that, that's fine for the minute. Let's uh, just uh, get the dynamics working on this first. So um, simulation rigid body. Now what happens if we just do that? Uh, that's not quite right because that's falling as a as a whole. So what we have to do here this time we, we do set um, inherit tag apply tag to children now obviously that's still not done anything but what you do then is individual elements and you set top level there we go and they're now falling apart I'm just wondering do you need to apply that to children no nope, so you don't even need that one you actually only need individual elements and then top level the shape because they're circular uh, it, that's fine like that on automatic um, you do have your settings here you've got bounce friction and collision uh, I'd say they're okay like that a little bit bouncy is cool. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is change the cloner from linear to a grid array. 
Yeah, look at that. So we've got lots more now. So there, that's a, a bit closer to what we're after here. Um, I'll just point out, I know that you can do this using a particle generator or something like that, but this I actually like doing it like this, and you'll see why in a moment, because I do something else just to make it look a little bit more fluid. Um, I, I don't know, I just found this way was the, the way I had the most control um, over it. Right, so let's see. I'm just going into the four view here because I like to be able to see this one here. I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. This one here and this one here. And what I will do is um, you have the uh, the count numbers here. So you have the the width count there, you have the height count there, and you have the uh, the other width count there. So if we just up those a little, so we can see we don't want any intersecting. Um, so that's fine like that. So that's given us a, a nice cube. We might as well make it a bit higher. So if we stretch that one up to about there, we can ramp that up like so. Uh, and let's just check, make sure that doesn't completely break the PC. And there we go. So that's pretty groovy. That's putting plenty of balls into there. I might we just add one more. Put that up to 12. There we go. And then you can see that, that doo -doo 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 -doo, there we go. So that's filling up our bowl nicely. Um, I'm just going to move them up a little further because we don't want them so close. And now we should see them all land a little bit crazier. Boom! There we go. Now, obviously, they're all falling down in a very uniform manner, which. Uh, mm, you might want, you might not. In this case, we don't really want it. So I'm just going to go into the front view. And the way I, I like to get around this, I like to uh, let the dynamics all sort it out for me by putting thing, something in the way that will cause them to uh, to uh, actually fall, you know, messed up. And that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm getting a bit confused because the cat's just walking into it. What am I rabbiting on about? So one of the things I'll do is I will set a... Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Cone. There it is. Right. And we'll just place this up here. Just drag that out a bit so it's a bit wider and maybe a little bit longer like that. Uh, we're going to rotate it. R on the keyboard gives you quick access to the rotate tool. Hold shift and it snaps too. So that's great. Uh, space to go back to our move tool. Um, and we're just going to move that down a little bit there. On our cone, we press C. We make that to make that editable, and we make sure that we select polygons. Uh, and then up in here in the selection tool, you can do rectangle rectangle selection. We select that, and over here we make sure it, we untick only select visible elements, and then that will basically, if I grab those, that will grab everything. Uh, so we go, uh, we grab those like we have done, and then just press delete. Now, if we go into our top view, go and have a look. You can see, obviously, it's solid inside. So we'll go back to the live selection. We want to select all of these. Um, the way I just do this is press U and then L. That gives you your ring selection. So we select the first one, hold Shift, the second one, and then the third one. Just press Delete, and there we go. We've now got a funnel. Um, boom, 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 boom. The funnel we need to give um, some dynamics to. So we right click, simulation. We want to do this one as a collider body. Um, but also, we want to make sure because now, if we just press play on that, see, there's, there's the same problem as we had with the bowl. So, what we do in order to fix that is we set the shape to static mesh because it's not moving anywhere. Um, but we want it to act as a mesh, so that should now, there we go, all fall through there. Boom, 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 boom. So let's have a look and see what we're looking at now. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and there you can see that now all the balls are falling slightly less uniformed. Now we've run out of frames, so I'm just going to ramp those up. I said for not to say 500, just up the frames there, and then just drag that along, and that gives you a few more frames. Right, brilliant, that's the first bit done. Now I'm gonna add um, add the big ball in so that we have something actually happen. Uh, so we create 
another sphere. Like so we just want to make sure that it will actually fit through this gap. So at the moment, obviously, it doesn't. So if you press T, you instantly get scale. So we can just scale that down so it will actually fit through the gap. There we go. All right. And then we just zoom back out and place that up above. Now, the way I am going to do this is a simulation rigid body. All right. Okay. So what will happen here now? The balls will fall through, and then our big ball will end up joining those. So that's not what we want really to happen. So we need to delay <coughs> when our big ball actually falls. So I'm just going to uh, set the dynamics on the tag for the sphere off for the moment, and see sort of what sort of frame we need to get to. Right, so it's about there. So. I'd say probably about 120, 120. We set a keyframe on the dynamics, boom, like that. Move to the next frame and turn them on, set the keyframe. I should point out, I forgot to actually do say this then. To set the keyframe, it's this little dot here. You hold control and you click on it. When it turns red, it means that you've set the keyframe. If it is yellow, it means that there's something changed, but a keyframe hasn't been set. So there we go, we've now set that. So hold control and click on it. Um, now we can test that. So they're all falling through. And then we hit the 120 and our large ball falls. Boom! Like that. Now that was a little uneventful. Um, I'm just going to move it back slightly because there was a bit of a delay that we don't really need. So we'll just move that back to about there. Now what we can do to make that so there's a little more happening is if we go to our dynamics and go to mass we can actually make the ball a bit heavier. So custom density let's ramp that to about six and try that out. So all our balls fall through, do, 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 fill the bowl up and then the big ball comes down and boosh that's a bit better. So we've got stuff going on. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Right, we. It's, uh, it does appear we don't need quite so many frames, so I'm just going to pull that back to 350. This just makes it a bit quicker for us when we're doing the next step. Uh, right. So we now have our animation of our bowl, our our spheres all falling down, um, and our big ball hitting. Um, on the uh, on the demo version, I actually had the ball hitting the side of the bowl, which caused it to flip. Now, basically, if you wanted to do that, um, just at the start, you place the ball over the side of the bowl like that, and then just after your keyframe for to make the ball drop, you set your cone. Uh, the uh, dynamics for the cone. Put a keyframe in there for enabled. Remember, hold control. Go to the next frame, disable it. It should turn yellow. Press control, and it should turn red. That means that now, when it falls down, all your balls fall down, <laughs> uh, and the big ball should come down and boom, send it all flying. <laughs> that was a bit odd, but we're not. <laughs> But that, that's the idea, so we're just, I'm just going to undo that for now because we don't actually want it to do that. Right, in this version I'm going to have it, so it just lands in the middle because it's a bit cool. Okay, so now we're going to do some camera work with it. Um, so we're going to start off, we're going to create a camera like that, make it our currently used view. Now see I've actually made a mistake there because I had the front view highlighted it set the camera so it's on the front view so I'm just going to delete that. Make sure you have your perspective view when you create your camera and then that will give us that so now we can move that around and that's our camera there. 
Uh, I'm going to set the camera to a 50mm because I like 50mm lenses, they're wicked. Um, and now I'm going to create a, um, like a dolly track for the camera. <clears throat> so we go to circle uh, in the uh, spline, so we've now made a circular spline, um, which is the wrong way at the moment, so we just set it so that it's on the XZ plane, and now that's sitting the correct way. Um, just ramp the radius up quite a bit for the minute. Now what we do is we go to the, our camera, right click, Cinema 4D tags, Align to Spline. Now this is brilliant, this is because now we can actually set the spline that the camera is sitting on as this circle. It doesn't have to be a circle, it can be a wiggly line you draw out with the, with the Bezier tool or whatever. Um, but for, the, for now we're going to use the circle now. I know this is, all seems to have disappeared, but if we look in the main view, that is because our camera is sat there, because it's set to follow round um, the, uh, the spline. So what we will do to, um, we will we'll make a null object for the camera to actually look at, uh, which we just go to here, select null object, and then that gives us a null object right in the middle. And we can attach the camera to that. So uh, what we do there is camera, focus object, null. That wasn't what I wanted to do at all. Sorry about that. Ignore that last one. Uh, we will make it so it is, sorry, right, I've caught up now. I know what I'm doing. So what we do is we right click on the camera, select target, like that. There we go. Right, so now we can set that null as the target just by dragging that onto it. There we go. We need to, I've got a bit of a problem here. My focus distance is set to one. Now we want to actually set the focus distance as the null. There we go. Right, now, so where are we? We have our camera sitting on the floor on its little dolly thing. So we're gonna just raise this circle up a bit and that will then in turn raise the camera up a bit. Uh, I'm also gonna turn the circle into an ellipse just um, so that it makes it not quite so uniform as it rotates around. Um, and let's make this just a little bigger. There we go. Okay. So now we can see our camera is sitting on our ellipse. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's uh, do this by, we're just gonna raise this ellipse up just a little more actually. Uh, actually no, I'm gonna raise the null slightly because I don't want the camera looking, there we go, yeah, brilliant. There, right, that's a bit better. Okay. Now that we have that, uh, we need to set it so the um, we want to do the, the, the slow-mo type thing. Right, what we do is we hit Control and D. And that gives us the properties of the, um, of the project. Under Dynamics, here, you can go to General, and you have a time scale here. This is what we're going to play with to do the slow-mo. There's a couple of bits you want to do first. Um, the first thing is expert. Uh, you want to set the steps for frame. Just step them up a little bit to mm. about say 20. Now this will hurt your your uh, your your you know the, the working out of the dynamics a little bit, but it's worth it because it will actually help to stop things falling through. If you've ever come across the problem where something falls th you know passes through another object and you don't want it to, then this uh, kind of fixes that. Um, now that we've done that, now obviously. That's going to slow it all down a bit. So me renders me me. It's uh, taking a little bit longer to work out all the dynamics, uh, but we're going to fix that now by going to cache and then we'll bake. Just let that run through. And what this is doing is basically working out all the dynamics and the physics for all of the balls, what they're going to do and how they're going to react to one another, and it stores it so that they 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 don't change. Uh, okay, so that's them done. So now you can scrub through, you see, and you've got the whole thing in there, like so. Boosh. So that's that's perfect. Now this is where we're gonna 
have some fun. So basically, if I play through, I want to get to the point where the big ball sort of lands in the little balls. So it all fills up. Boom! There it is. So I'll just hit pause there. And so right now at that point, I'm going to go to general, time scale, press control on the little dot, and then just step forward, I don't know, five or six frames, and then set that now to five and click the keyframe. Now what that will do is it won't seem to have done anything yet because obviously we've got the uh, it baked. So what we do is just go back to the start, clear the cache, and then bake it again. I could cut all this out, but I won't. I'll make you sit and watch it. Right, there we go. So now, what will happen is we go through, all the balls fall into the bowl, and boosh, and it all goes all cool and super slow-mo. So at about 260, we want to speed it up again. See, now we are going to start to run out of frames, so I'm just going to ramp that back up to about 550, like so. And at this point here, 260, we're going to go back to general, and time scale, back up, uh, set a keyframe, forward a few frames, and set that back to 100. And set the keyframe. Don't forget to set the keyframe. Once again, we have to go to cache. Well, let's just rewind it. We clear the cache, and we bake it again. Dun, 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 dun. Have a little drink. Sorry if I'm talking lots of dribble during this one. I'm struggling this morning. <laughs> okay. We're nearly there. 85%. Right. So we've baked that in. So now when we press play, we should get all our balls falling in the bowl. Don't forget, if I just hit a quick render now, they, they are nice balls. Okay. Boosh! It will go slow. And then goes all fast again. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's pretty groovy. So now just to get a bit of camera motion, a bit of a camera animation going on there, what we do is go to our uh, align to spline, and you can actually set the position here, see? By jogging this up. So the way I like to do this is to set uh, a keyframe at the start and then move through to the point where it goes slow, say about here, and then set that to say 40%. Like that. Set the keyframe, move around to where it speeds up again, which is about there and set that to 80%, like that, and then scoot all the way to the end, and set it to 100%, and set that keyframe. So now you've got nice slow camera motion, do, 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 and then, <laughs> and there you go, so you get a nice bit of zooming, and it all flies out. Simple. Um, I might just make the circle a little bigger so it's not quite so close like that. And then you just add a couple of area lights to it. Obviously, you spend a bit of time and make it look nice. There's no point. You don't want to just do it like this. But I have to admit, I am a, a massive fan of how this looks if you just sort of leave things untextured but have the shadows on. So if I just do a couple of lights like that. Just render that out, and then uh, yeah. So if I just add a few of the balls in, and you have a look there. See, I I love that. I love that kind of plasticine look. I think that's absolutely great. You know, we'll run that through. Da, 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 da. And you can see there we go. Look, that's all filling up nicely. Bam. 
I need a faster PC at home. Oosh. Obviously, we're around the back. There's no light around the back here. And there you go. That's uh, that's how you do it. Obviously, you can spend a bit of time and make it all look pretty. You know, you can change the color of the balls. Just double click down here to create a material. Select maybe a blue color, a bit of reflection, turn that down a bit, add a Fresnel, turn that down a bit, and then place that onto the cloner. And we've now got some nice shiny blue balls. Let's make a copy of that one. Uh, mm, turn the reflection off on this and make it white. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I was going to attach it to the bowl, put the blue back on the cloner. There you go. That's what I was trying to do. There we go. Yeah, that makes quite an interesting scene. So there. Have a play with that. See what you can come up with. Um, I'm sure you can find a, an interesting use for it, but it's more the principle that, that is, is the handy thing there. It took me quite a while to work out how to do that slow-mo thing. I was doing it by rendering out, you know, like a, a video with 600 frames per uh, you know, 600 frames a second, and then using After Effects to, to uh, slow it down um, to get the slow-mo effect. But uh, obviously what you do there is spend about four days rendering. Um, whereas this way, you kind of, you can get some pretty quick effects, but you, you kind of need to use the bake uh, when you're doing this, otherwise you, you, get a, you, you get a lot of sort of whack because of the fact that you're changing dynamics and times and stuff. So if you don't use the bake, it, it makes it very tricky. So hopefully that's of some use to you, and uh, you'll come up with something cool. If you do, then uh, please post it on, on my site. I'd love to see it, ratemyfuneral.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.